Alenka is a Dr. Alenka <laughs> is a researcher and data visualization designer at Josef Stefan Institute in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Her work is focused on co-design of AI-driven services and data visualization tools. Martina Zunica fell in love with data visualization while studying graphic and communication design. She specialized in visualizing data, keeping her creative background evident in her works. They are both going to talk to us about a data-driven self-exploration. If you can count it, you can tell its story. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Marie actually sto has stolen a little bit of our intro, but we really wanted to thank you for being here at the very last speech of the very last day of this amazing conference. Uh, no pressure at all, right? No, no pressure at all. Uh, so, uh, just a fun fact, um, even though we've been working together for a year and a half now, quite intensely, we've only met two days ago. And uh, today we really want to share with you the story of people through the data visualization challenge that uh, we started uh, last uh, January. But first, we have actually a question for you, so please raise your hand if your answer is yes. Do you like pizza? Cool, <laughs> it's very cool, because most of us have something in common and that's oh, wonderful, really. But we are also sure that even though you and probably the person next to you have the same enthusiasm and love for pizza, you will probably look at it in different ways. In fact, maybe for if you're a chef, for example, you could be more interested into a technical aspect or ingredients, like has the crust crunch enough or has it grown enough? But what if you're hungry? Maybe if you're hungry, are more focused on the smell and on the taste of the pizza. And more, what if you are a designer, right? <laughs> we are mostly data visualization designers in some way, all of us. And maybe it may remind us pie charts. And every slice makes us 25% closer to happiness. Uh, and finally, what if I'm on a diet? Right? It's like I'm starving, I'm looking at pizza, and I think, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Finally, I'm having my pizza after too many days of healthy food. So, is this challenge that we are talking about, about pizza? Well, not exactly. It's actually about how we see things in our personal life. Because each of us sees things in different ways, depending on our background and personal experiences. Mm -hmm. So, actually, uh, when we started the challenge, it was just the two of us. And um, as you have, stirred the for the, you have heard the story before, we met on the DVS Slack. Um, and then, through the, through the process, lots of people joined us. Uh, and now we are this uh, very vibrant, cozy community of data visualization pract uh, practitioners from all over the world. Uh, so now to actually we've been talking about the challenge, but let's look now on uh, how the challenge works. Uh, this challenge works on a monthly basis. Uh, so at the beginning of the month, we decide for a topic. Uh, and then also from starting this year, we also introduced uh, the concept of a constraint while visualizing. The idea is to then collect data for a week in this month, and this can be very flexible depending on how uh, your preferences are. Uh, then we visualize that data, and uh, um, through, um, we can do this through either uh, doing it by sketching, hence why we also have the hashtag journal database, uh, or we can do it digitally. So this is very open to how people want to do it. And at the end of the month, we then share our visualizations in the common space that we have on Telegram and also optionally on social media. And uh, for us, this is really like a learning process for both the design aspects of practicing the visualization, but also for our personal experience. In fact, this is not just a challenge about practicing and our data visualization skills that improved for sure in some way for all of us. But um, we actually created a symbiotic relationship with data. 
So actually when data humanize you and vice versa, so creating this you know, never ending loop. As Georgia Lupi's data humanism mentioned before and all we know, uh, they, she teaches us that big data can affect our life but, and small data can do it even more. Mm -hmm. So, similar to the Dear Data concept, we initially focused really on the realization of this practice. Um, but then, actually, while we were doing it, it kind of organically grew uh, into uh, looking at the consequences of these visualizations and the imp actual impact on ourselves. So, this is especially relevant uh, in the context of objectivity. Because as data visualization designers, we uh, very often uh, really want to strive for this ideal of objectivity that we will anatomically dissect the data and find the story that is there, maybe there are more stories, uh, and then find the good visual representation to really tell about it uh, very objectively. But when we are working on the personal data, you actually bring in this whole context of who you are, uh, your all past experiences, and therefore the data visualization can never be completely objective. Um, and because of this symbiotic relationship <laughs> with the data, um, and the insights that we get when we are creating visualizations as we being the actual audience, we really get to this reinforcement feedback loop. And I would like to thank Rudy for explaining that so brilliantly yesterday, uh, where actually this subjectivity of how we get the insight uh, about ourselves from the data that we kind of uh, have now in this visual form really have uh, an impact on us. And now, some examples. Let's see some examples and go through our community. We have Emanuele, who's sitting there. <laughs> uh, Emanuele tracked data for one week uh, about how many times he complained. Um, it was a lot at least, <laughs> and he, uh, really, uh, he was really into this topic since he said uh, he was the very best of complainers. Um, but actually, after visualizing his data, uh, he find out, found out that maybe he wasn't, there wasn't so many complainers moments uh, in, in his life as he thought. Instead, he actually noticed there were many people who were complaining more than him. So, <laughs> this is amazing, but <laughs> um, it actually shows how this kind of data datafication of our personal life uh, can really uh, make patterns, right? It brings patterns out and it changes us in return. Then we have an example from Cora, which is also sitting there. <laughs> and she tracked data about reading. And while doing so, she noticed that she actually reads quite a lot, but maybe not all the things that she would want to read. Uh, so maybe a little bit nicer novels or uh, serious articles. And uh, due to her family and work situation, uh, she also noticed that, oh, actually now I read much more of I listen to more of the audiobooks, which is actually a very convenient way to consume books. So the data that should be objective was actually subjective, and this is no surprise because it's personal data. But um, also because after this realization of how she is how her life evolves around the concept of reading, uh, that data insights changed the way uh, she looked at her life. Alessio's tribute to her granny has been a very touching and moving moment in our community, and she uh, visualized data about yellow things around her, and she decided to use this, visual this visualization as um, as a moment to face her pain for the loss. She decided to smile at every object, yellow object that she met, and that she collected all the data in this visualization. 
and she used it as you know part of her healing process. And we are sure, because, because I know actually what I asked for, and uh, we, we know that Alessia probably won't look at yellow as the same way, it's just not a color anymore, and that she will notice yellow much more than before. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit of, about experimentation. Since this challenge runs on a monthly basis and you only have to collect the, uh, 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 data for a week, this is so much time. And you can really find uh, maybe ways to challenge yourself and practice new tools or find new techniques how to visualize your data. Um, so for me, um, I used to do lots of experiments uh, during my PhD and postdoc in cell biology and diabetes. And since now I work in an AI lab, it only it felt so natural to actually experiment with the AI generative tools that came out last summer. And the idea here that oh, yeah. sorry, <laughs> the idea here uh, was really to find the good way to visualize the walking theme, for which I only collected one data point. Uh, and uh, with the intention uh, to create a story out of it, a comic felt a, comic felt a nice way uh, to represent those muddy shoes. And for Anna, uh, which is a, she's a data architect, uh, she was really mesmerized with the possibility that, that D3 offers. And therefore, for the topic of uh, reading, she decided to uh, test this JavaScript library and uh, create an interactive visualization that uh, you can also check on her Instagram account. We also experimented about visual metaphors. Uh, as you know, there are very powerful tools to visualize data or in general to communicate. And I decided to collect data about uh, moments I felt beloved. I collected data every... <laughs> yes, it, there were many. Um, I collected data for one week about every time that I felt beloved. And uh, I associated the concept of feeling beloved with the concept of blooming. So I used the visual metaphor of flowers uh, to identify every moment that it happened. Every flower uh, represents a moment, and depending on shapes, colors, and details, uh, it tells different stories and different moments of those events. Also, the position is not casual, because depending on if this event was usual, like, I don't know, a kiss from someone I love, or unexpected, so something nice that people taught me, uh, I chose a different position on this uh, um, blooming tree, and it turned out to be a very cheesy data visualization. <laughs> yeah. Alin, on the other hand, uh, collected the data about sleeping and used the metaphor of pillows to remind us of the coziness of the night. Uh, then the starry sky to, to, to show that night, uh, and also this barbed wire to really signify where the nights were a little bit rough. About the same topic, still sleeping, but Marta decided to visualize it as a visual metaphor using data dreamers, uh, data dream sketches. And she collected data about uh, the time she spent, she spent in the bed while sleeping first, obviously, and then snoozing the alarm or just chatting at the phone. Mm -hmm. So this challenge really created a network of people. And those people are coming from different countries. They have different backgrounds, different contexts, the different stories that they tell. And the challenge really gave us this common space with, where we could exercise this same language that we have, the language of data and data visualization, to explore uh, the different stories that we are telling about ourselves. And as an example here, you can see on the topic of yellow, uh, contributions from Taylor, John Andrea, and Annette uh, on the way how they decided to, to tackle this very, um, uh, very interesting topic. And seeing these different expressions 
uh, in more than just one data point, <laughs> really reinforced our feedback loop uh, on how subjectively we respond to the datification of our tiny little worlds. So we packed all our experiences, we visualized them using uh, many ways, but still or recognizable for everyone through this common language of data. And we not only obtain a data collection, but also a human collection. Thank you. Very interesting. Can you um, just remind us where we can find the details of this to subscribe to the next challenge? We have um, a website, still a work in progress, but still it has the main information. And we have a um, group on Telegram. It's an open channel to anyone who wants to join, has the want, has the need. Uh, so just reach us out with the hashtag Journal Data Vids Challenge. And you can find, you look for actually also the hashtag on Instagram and Twitter, and you find maybe many projects that people shared or just ask us. <laughs> <laughs> Old school way. <laughs> yes. Hi, my name's Angel. Um, I would like to hear any tips on building community within DBS and Slack. You obviously did that, and now it's you know, blossomed into this. So anyone else that would want to create a challenge or maybe within a community in a city or something related to a, the particular industry, um, how can they go about you know, using this community to create that group? Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't really have an answer to that because uh, we were, <laughs> um, it just kind of organically grew. Um, but at, at least from our experiences was that um, sharing a lot about what we are doing, and especially Martina, she's a very good sharer. I'm very much of an introvert, so thank you, Martina. Um, I'm the social media part yeah. of the group. <laughs> Uh, so maybe it would be, go something in the direction of really sharing a lot what you're doing, why you're doing it, and then um, then things can organically grow, maybe. Yeah, also I would, I would add that um, I'm sure that there are many people with the same interests out there, not caring about which, which kind of interest, and uh, maybe if you give them a place where they can, you know, find other people interested in, and also that helps each other, helping each other uh, into creating stuff, etc. Uh, I mean, I think that it really it can be really organic, and people just find it. Also, social media algorithm, I guess, it helps. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is what is the challenge? Because doing this weekly, is, is it weekly, right? I understood. Or it's every week or? Is it monthly? Monthly. And we collect, we divide it a month into weeks. Uh, yes, a monthly. Um, but isn't there months where you just don't have an idea or just uh, think, why did I start <laughs> this in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can answer to that. <laughs> uh, because, um, yes, so we are keeping this format uh, like months from 1st to 28th. Um, uh, but actually, you know, this is very open. So you can collect data for the first week, you can collect it for the last week, and you're like, oh my god, no, I don't have really have much time to visualize. Or you don't just don't do it at all, because the topic that there is doesn't really talk to you. Um, and uh, I know I was collecting uh, every month, uh, but then I created some visualizations at the end of the year, and that's also fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, any more questions? Okay, a last question there. Hello, very nice uh, project. And um, actually, there is a trend um, currently that many people try to quantify themselves and uh, this will help them to achieve maybe some of their goals or maybe uh, about training, sports and so on. So I'm wondering, were there any cases that someone was um, tracking some data for a week and then they understand, oh, maybe I need to track this all the time and then maybe make some 
automated visualization of that or maybe some dashboard of that. So this is the first question. The second question, uh, when is the bu book being published? <laughs> 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 yeah, to answer your first question, <laughs> um, yes, tracking things is a very popular, popular way of uh, uh, getting to understand them. And for us, we kind of intentionally went for the topics that are not so self-evident. You know, like, okay, we had the walking, you could count the steps. Some people didn't do that. Um, and so it's really um, that... Um, the insights that came out of, of after this week of collection, uh, maybe for some people it, it's really there was this urge to then track further. But um, at least I can speak from personal experience that when you become aware of something, then it just exists in your um, you know in your head somewhere as an additional dimension. So maybe you don't have to track it any longer because it's already there, and then you maybe want to track some more things about yourself that you're not aware of them yet. Yeah, I still notice yellow things around me. So mm. this is something. For the second, I mean, second question is pretty easy. Uh, we are, if there is an editor. Cool. <laughs> yeah. We should have talked with the CRC press. Right? <laughs> we should, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. we can. We have yes. Also, it all started thanks to you, Amanda, because it was under a post of you on your DVS Slack, so, yes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. It was a thank great you. way to end. <laughs>